no discussion of contemporary anti-Semitism can be complete without examining its deeply conspiratorial character. The claims that the Jews, or Zionists, are in possession of considerable wealth, power, and influence, and are using it to control democratic governments, financial institutions, media corporations, and cultural establishments, can be found among all spheres from which anti-Semitism emerges today. Jews and Zionists are also scapegoated for disasters and blamed for all that goes wrong in this conspiratorial worldview. This connection between conspiracy myths and anti-Semitism is long-standing, and we've already come across a major stage in its development when discussing the publication and spread of the infamous Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Throughout the course, we've seen how myths involving Jewish control and power have come to surface again and again, leading at times to disastrous results. Let's further examine the place these conspiracy theories hold in contemporary anti-Semitism. Conspiracy theories play uh, a central role in extremist politics of all time. And anti-Semitism has a very strong traditional role within conspiracy theories. And this is why repeatedly we see anti-Semitism cropping up in the language, in the discourse of extremist movements of all types, whether they are far right, far left, radical Islamist movements, and even New Age movements. We often find anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Uh, there is a British think tank called Demos, which has done a lot of research on conspiracy theories. They looked at the, the literature and the arguments of a full range of extremist movements, and they found anti-Semitic conspiracy theories cropping up in all their literature. The idea of Zog, the Zionist occupation government, that there are Zionist or Jewish uh, hidden powers behind our governments, was the most common one they found in the literature of all different extremist movements. And there's reasons for this. Uh, Anti-Semitism was the dominant type of conspiracy theory in that conspiracy world, pretty much from the middle of the 19th century to the middle of the 20th century. So any conspiracy theory that came out of that period, or that harks back to that period from today, will inevitably bring anti-Semitism in it, into it. Uh, and this has been facilitated to a large extent by the growth of social media on the internet. If you wanted to come across these anti-Semitic ideas 20 years ago, you would have to go and actually find an extremist movement, persuade them to let you into their meetings, and these are not trusting people, uh, get to read their magazines, which would not really look like professional magazines, or send off to their book lists. And then you'd start to see these ideas. 10 years ago, uh, you could find them on the internet on extremist message boards like Stormfront and other far-right groups. But again, it was people talking to like-minded people. It was far-right people gathering together, making networks and connections, but not really reaching out of those boundaries. Nowadays, with social media, these extremist ideas, these conspiracy theories, this anti-Semitism is on all of our phones, in all of our pockets, in our children's bedrooms. And it looks as professional and as believable as something from the BBC or from CNN. All you need is a Facebook page or a Twitter account or an Instagram account, and there it is. So these ideas spread, and what we're hearing from teachers in schools is that increasingly their students are bringing in material that they found on the internet that they do not have the critical powers to assess and to challenge and to debunk. Um, and increasingly teachers are having to argue against conspiracy theories in the classroom. So this is a new problem. We hear a lot about fake news nowadays. People talk about fake news and post-truth politics all the time. Of course, anti-Semitism is the original fake news. Anti-Semitism has always relied on lies and libels and myths about Jews that unscrupulous political and religious leaders have used to mobilise their own supporters or to whip up a mob. George Orwell, one of the great British political writers, wrote a, a famous essay on anti-Semitism in 1945 where he wrote uh, words to the effects of one, of one of the striking things about anti-Semitism is that you have to be able to believe things that could not possibly be true. So conspiracy theories, anti-Semitism, what is now being called fake news, 
They all live together in a world. And it's given a new lease of life to some quite nasty anti-Semitic ideas. Holocaust denial, for example, has really failed as a political project. It's something that neo-Nazis tried 20, 25 years ago to use to revive National Socialism. No one bought it. But in the conspiracy world, where you're not supposed to believe any official story about anything, you shouldn't believe anything that any establishment authority tells you, Holocaust denial has a home. And it has a home alongside uh, conspiracy theories about 9-11, uh, or about the uh, 7th of July tube bombings here in Britain, or about the moon landings, or about who, you know, Princess Diana's death. And all these things just fit into these mix together. And the old barriers between what is far left and what is far right, what is fascist and what is anti-fascist, get completely blurred and broken down because you get the same conspiracy theories in all different parts of the political spectrum. And as ever, as I said, when conspiracy theories are the main way of understanding politics and of viewing the world, anti-Semitism will always have not just a place, but a central place.